I have separated assemblies contained in an antenna turntable from the other antenna topics. Many radar sets employ electronic beam steering, which is not dependent on the mechanical movement of the antenna. Therefore, the topics covered in this video are no longer relevant to these radars. However, there are still many developments in air traffic control radar that utilize a parabolic or slot antenna and require an antenna turntable. An antenna turntable is a device that allows antennas to be rotated and pivoted in any direction. To ensure redundancy, two electric motors are used. However, Controlling both electric motors can be complicated since driving one motor while letting the other rotate passively is not an option. Both electric motors must drive equally to distribute the load. If one electric motor applies more load then the other one would work as a generator, and in this way, increasing the load on the driving motor. Such a system would cause uneven rotation and result in instability. If the rotation is continuous, this means, there is no left and right stop, then the signal and power supply lines must be transferred from the stationary to the rotating part using a slip ring unit. This slip ring unit will protrude through the dark hole in the center of the antenna turntable. With passive antennas, the transmitter's power must also be routed to the antenna using an RF rotary joint. One, or two redundant, encoders are installed in the stationary unit, which transmits the coded signal of the current antenna direction to the radar. The rotor of the bearing must carry the entire weight of the rotating part of the antenna array. This weight, often several hundred kilograms, then falls on a few square millimeters of the ball surfaces in the ball bearing. If the balls of the bearing are deformed due to a lack of lubrication, that would be a lack of maintenance. The antenna would begin to vibrate as it rotates. These vibrations are transferred to the antenna pattern and cause inaccuracies in measuring the coordinates. In this case, the only solution is to demount the antenna and completely replace the entire drive mechanism. This drive mechanism must have as little gear backlash as possible so that the antenna rotates smoothly and evenly. The slip ring unit is used to conduct all the necessary voltages and power to the antenna. These are not only the lines for a power supply, as shown in the picture. In the case of an active antenna, this can already be the raw data from the echo signals, either already digitized or still at the intermediate frequency level. Many switching and control signals are required. With passive antennas, this may be only for switching the polarity type. The more active components are installed directly in the antenna, the more lines are required for control signals. With polarimetric weather radar, it is even common for the transmitter with the magnetron to be located in the electronics cabinet in a room below the antenna, but the duplexers and most of the receiver's high-frequency components are mounted in the rotational part of the pedestal. This solution considerably reduces line losses and has the advantage that a waveguide in the slip ring transmitter only transmits the transmission power and no longer the echo signals. There is also no need to route several waveguides downwards for different receiving channels. Signals with a frequency of up to 120 MHz can be transmitted with one line on the slip ring unit. If many cables need to be transmitted from the stationary to the rotating part, slip rings in the hollow shaft design are typically used. The waveguides, along with the rotary joint, can then be installed inside the hollow shaft. To ensure the lowest possible contact resistance, the slip rings and the contacts are usually hard gold-plated. The contacts must not flutter as it would generate a sequence of pulses instead of a DC voltage. Therefore, the contact springs of the slip ring must press on the slip ring with sufficient force. However, if this force is too high, the abrasion will be larger. If high power is required in the power supply lines, the contacts are made of carbon brushes. These carbon brushes are made of electrographite, where the graphite content serves as a conductive lubricant on the slip ring. As a result, 
the force for the contact can be somewhat higher. However, these carbon brushes generate more abrasion, which is conductive and must be removed during regular maintenance work to prevent short circuits. The rotation speed is usually limited. This limitation does not affect the function of radar antennas, with their relatively slow rotational speeds. So-called pancake slip rings can also be used in smaller radar sets. However, these have a lower permissible rotational speed, which decreases the more cables have to be transmitted and the larger the diameter required. The maximum speed occurs at the outermost slip ring. Several symmetrically distributed contacts are usually used to achieve a uniform force application. An encoder is an electromechanical device used to generate a sequence of pulses depending on bearing angle and revolution speed, the so-called azimuth change pulses, abbreviated to ACP. These pulse sequences are used in a radar set to transmit the bearing angle information from the antenna turntable to the computer or the display units. The bearing angle is only measured indirectly, as each additional pulse informs an evaluation unit that the antenna has rotated by a fixed amount instead of a position angle. Radar commonly uses an optical encoder, which scans a line grid on a transparent disk with a light barrier. The picture shows a demonstration model. The number of pulses per revolution can vary depending on the required accuracy. For short-range radar sets for river navigation, 2048 pulses per revolution are sufficient. Each pulse marks an angular elevation of 0.176 degrees, which is completely sufficient with a half power beam width of the antenna of often more than 1 degree. In older air traffic control radar sets, twice the number of pulses was used. This enables an accuracy of 5.3 angular minutes, corresponding to 0.088 degrees. The standard for modern radar sets is 16,384 pulses per revolution with an accuracy of 1.3 angular minutes. In addition, a so-called north reference pulse is required, which occurs once per revolution and marks the start of the next revolution. If this north pulse is missing, the image on the display unit can no longer be assigned to a fixed angle. If some ACPs are lost due to interference and the north pulse is permanently missing, the image will slowly rotate to the left. The evaluation circuit consists of a synchronous counter. The counter converts the pulses into a parallel data word. The north reference pulse resets the counter after each revolution so that counting can start again from zero regardless of the number of pulses counted. The 16-bit encoder counts more pulses internally than necessary for 16-bit coding per antenna rotation. The encoder electronics then convert these pulses into the required format. Unlike traditional encoders, the north reference pulse no longer needs to be set mechanically. Instead, the actual time of the north angle is reported electronically during installation. Depending on the electronic version within the encoder, the north pulse can occur synchronously with the ACP pulses. If the encoder contains frequency dividers, it generates the north pulse synchronously. However, the north pulse can also be generated independently and, therefore, not synchronously. RF rotary joints are used in radar sets with passive and rotating antennas. RF signals are transmitted between moving and static components. RF rotary joints are often combined with additional slip ring units and are then referred to as hybrid rotary joints. Contacting rotary joints are usually coaxial cables whose cable sections from the static to the rotating part have direct electrical contact during rotation. The high bandwidth usually ranges from DC up to frequencies of several tens of gigahertz. The upper cutoff frequency results from the construction of the contact elements, the transverse capacitances, and the diameter of the coaxial cables. They are also limited in their maximum rotational speed and have a short service life due to abrasion.
Non-contacting RF rotary joints are available in coaxial and waveguide designs for frequency ranges up to 100 GHz. They use electromagnetic waves or electrical fields for transmission. One design of these rotary joints uses waveguides. However, information can also be transmitted using light and fiber optic cables. One additional option to consider is establishing connections like wireless LAN but within protected enclosures. The picture shows an RF rotary joint of a nodding height finder radar operating in the S-band or, according to the NATO designation, in the E-band. As a typical passive component, this rotary joint works in both directions. In the case of radar, this means both for the extremely strong transmitted signal and for the very weak echo signal. It is a so-called U-type rotary joint. The interfaces are available in I, U, and L styles. These differ in the orientation of the input and output connections of a rotary joint. In the I style, both are aligned with the rotational axis. In the U style, both are perpendicular to the rotational axis and in the L style one is perpendicular to the axis while the other is aligned with it. The RF power is fed in with a rectangular waveguide in wave propagation mode H10. This is the lowest loss propagation mode. In the rotary joint, this is decoupled from the rectangular waveguide as an E01 wave and routed to the rotary joint as a round waveguide. This rotary joint is a choke joint. Then there is another transition from round to square waveguide. A pin can be seen in each of the waveguide openings. This pin acts as an inductor and prevents the occurrence of unfavorable higher propagation modes in the waveguide. The stationary and rotating sections of the round waveguide have no direct electrical contact. This waveguide connection is called a choke joint. The choke joint provides good electromagnetic continuity between sections of the waveguide with very little power loss. Due to the two lambda quarter long slots, the shortcut at the end of the horizontal slot is first transformed into an ideally infinitely high impedance and then into a shortcut again after the next lambda quarter long slot. Although both waveguide parts have no electrical contact, the wave sees an ideal shortcut for the high frequency at this point. Possible DC contacts via the metal housing lie behind this short circuit and are negligible. The flanges for connection to other waveguide sections are also choke connections. You may find the internet radar tutorial useful. It has a vast collection of radar set data. Thank you for your attention.